They're trying to figure out what are the innovative ways that they can get people more immersed with the world and a heightened sense of reality through AR. There are a lot of other things that they're trying in this space and just trying to see essentially what sticks, what could be monetized long term. So it's very interesting to see a few of the innovations that they're throwing out there. Hey gang, it's Monday, May 2nd. Jeremy and listeners, welcome to the Behind the Numbers Daily, an e-marketer podcast made possible by M Particle. I'm Marcus and I'm joined by our Director of Marketing and Commerce Briefings, it's Jeremy Goldman. Hey, great to be with you. Cannot believe it's May. Yeah, it's troubling. Today's fact, let's start there. American forests. So the US is known for a lot of things. What would you say the US is known for, Jeremy? Burgers. Oh, I didn't put burgers. I didn't think of that. But yeah, football, perhaps, barbecue, Vegas, apple pie, pickup trucks, country music, and putting clothes on dogs, and lots of other stuff. But it should be known for its forests. It has over 3 million square miles of forest land. That's the fourth most in the world of any country, fourth most after Canada, Brazil, and Russia. There are 154 national forests in the US and Puerto Rico. The largest US national forest is Tongass in Alaska. California has the most national forests with 18, and national forests provide 66 million people, which is a fifth of the population. 66 million people in the US, their municipal water supply. Anyway, today's real topic, Snapchat's Q1 2022. Jeremy, it's all things Snapchat today, as the title suggests. We're going to be talking about the user highlights, some revenue highlights, and then anything else that was interesting that we need to discuss regarding Snapchat and how they did in the first quarter of the year. Let's start with the user highlights. Snapchat reached 332 million daily active users in Q1, up 13 million on Q4, but slightly down from the 15 million they added last Q1. So good, but not as good as last Q1. And most 10 million of those 13 million new users came from rest of world, 2 million from Europe, 1 million from North America. But for you, the most interesting user figure this quarter was blank. For me, it was the top line, the fact that it was 18% up from a DAU standpoint, daily active users Mm -hmm. year over year. I mean, I think that that's something that a lot of other companies right now wouldn't mind having. Yeah, pretty healthy. It's been in the 20s or low 20s or 19 to 23 for the last seven quarters or so. So it's eight, nine, you could say it dipped a little bit below that. But yeah, it's pretty standard for its growth. But to be able to hold that growth going forwards, as the law of large numbers suggests, that should be going down pretty solid with 19. So 19% growth year on year, 13 million they added. The most interesting figure for me is the Q1 net additions exactly the same as Q4. 13 million overall additions in Q4, 13 million in Q1. Rest of world added 10 million in Q4, 10 million in Q1, North America 1 million in both, and Europe added 2 million in both. So pretty much identical to Q4, but in terms of net additions, but your biggest takeaway from the user growth figures this quarter has to be blank. It has to be that there is a lot of opportunity and untapped potential, particularly in other markets. I'm going to probably come back to that thread as we're talking because mm. a lot of people don't seem to realize the same thing with Netflix and India. Netflix suffered a lot when they reported recently by virtue of the fact that they haven't been able to conquer another major market that they had set their sights on, right? So for Snapchat, what is that market or those markets, especially outside of North America and Europe, that they're going to make major inroads into? Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, they've been pretty consistent, but in terms of major markets, yeah, it's a good point. So the thing for me is staggeringly consistent on user growth in each region. So overall, they've added 13 million new users to their total each of the last four quarters. It's been 13, 13, 13, 13. In terms of North America, they've added one to two million new users in North America for each of the last 11 quarters, bar one. And on average, They've added 10 million rest of world users each of the last seven 
quarters. So it's been pretty predictable user additions each quarter for Snapchat, which again, as we said, as you add more people, it gets harder to add more people because you're running out of people to add, but it doesn't seem to be the case for them. And Snapchat also, let's not forget, is not as young as some people think. You know, a lot of people kind of lump it in with TikTok. TikTok, as we know it, is far younger than Snapchat. So Mm -hmm. yes, people have had the opportunity to join the platform for quite some time. Yeah. Let's put a grade on their user growth in Q1. I would actually give it a B plus. I think that there are a lot of things that they're doing. You have to give them a lot of credit for trying. And certainly there are a lot of innovative efforts that they're putting forward, you know, so Mm -hmm. whether or not they pan out in the long term, that's another thing. But the fact that they have tried so many different things and a few of these are going to stick. I mean, that's the kind of thing that I think a lot of people are looking for from Meta. Yeah, long term we'll see, but short term they expect to add 9 million new users in Q2. That would bring them to 344 million total ahead of expectations. 341 was the expectation for Q2, but they're looking at 344, 3 million more than expected. Let's move to revenue. The highlights, Snapchat made nearly $1.1 billion in Q1. That's up 38% year on year, but down from a 66% year on year growth that they saw last Q1 still healthy. North America and rest of world grew just below 40% in Q1 year on year. Europe was just above 40%. But Jeremy, the most interesting revenue figure for you this quarter was blank. Okay, so you'll count this as a revenue figure, but average revenue per user in the rest of the world, excluding North America and Europe, okay, it was 95 cents, and that was up 2% year over year. And just by comparison, in North America, it's $7.77, which was 31% up over year. So my question is, if you want to grow this platform long term, why do you make so little in that rest of the world. And then it was so little, you would think you would be able to do better right year Mm -hmm. over year, but it hasn't really happened. So I think that that's a huge opportunity. Absolutely. Yeah. The share of revenue Snapchat makes from North America continues to hover at that 70%. 7-0 has done for years, but unlocking that opportunity in other markets is going to be key. Your biggest takeaway from the revenue growth figures this quarter is blank is that there's opportunity all over for Snapchat, but they really have to be continually thinking about getting outside of their home base, establishing opportunities to sell more in local markets, particularly in Asia and Latin America and all these other places where people just haven't heard of Snapchat in a lot Mm -hmm. of cases. Mm -hmm. How about a grade for their revenue figures in Q1? I would say it's actually a B, the very fact that they Hmm. grew, they did a lot of things right. Again, it's so hard to give a grade without looking at all of the other companies that are reporting earnings right around now. And there are some reasons to be optimistic about Snap long term, which is why I'm giving them a B compared to some other companies that are giving investors and advertisers less of a reason to be optimistic. Yeah. Snapchat say expected Q2 revenue to rise 20 to 25%. That would be a little bit lower than Wall Street's estimate of 28%. So that's what they're going for. The other most interesting part of their earnings for you was blank. So I think it was probably the fact that there's a lot of innovation coming from them. They are trying a number of different things to grow. It's everything from philanthropic partnerships to interesting community lenses and getting more engagement with that stuff. I think there might be one or two things later on in the episode, possibly, that we're going to discuss. Yeah, so I'll leave that for then. So it's just the fact that Snap is trying things and it knows who it is as a company. And I think that that's one reason to be optimistic about it as a company compared to, again, some other folks in the space that are you know a little bit more beleaguered, a little bit more challenged right now. Yeah, that's it for the lead. It's time now for the halftime report. Jeremy, what's your takeaway from the first half? And I'm assuming your overall grade for the companies B something. Yeah, maybe I'm being difficult on them, but I think that a lot of their competitors I'm giving lower (laughs) grades to these days. So the B is not really all that bad. I know some people judge on the curve and, you know, everything is like an A minus and everybody gets a gold star and that's not how I roll. So I think with Snap, it's a very interesting time to be following this company, particularly because there are a lot of people interested in the metaverse, metaverse adjacent technologies Mm -hmm. and Snap. When you think of AR, that's really the place where they shine. Mm -hmm. We'll talk a bit more about that in the other side of the ad break, but first, a quick word from our sponsor, M-Particle.
At the end of the day, your customer has to be at the center of everything you do. This starts with the right customer data strategy as well as the right foundation to solve the challenges that typically inhibit success such as data quality, data governance, and connectivity. MParticle is your real-time data infrastructure that helps you accelerate your data strategy by cleansing, visualizing, and integrating your customer data from anywhere to anywhere. Ultimately, better data leads to better decisions, better customer experiences, and better outcomes. See why the best brands choose MParticle. Go to www.mparticle.com. Folks, we are back. It's time now for In Other News today. Snapchat's involvement in the metaverse and Be Real is Gen Z's new favorite social media app, apparently. Story one, Snapchat's involvement in the metaverse. Well, Snapchat's new AR feature, Custom Land Markers, allows users and marketers alike to create AR visuals tied to specific locations, giving a glimpse of a mobile version of the metaverse, writes insider intelligence analyst Daniel Konstantinovich. He notes that phones aren't often featured in discussions around the metaverse, but Snap's AR platforms have broader potential other than the novelty of dropping an AR landmark. But Jeremy, Snapchat's foray into the metaverse in your opinion will be blank well i think that it will be gradual mm. by that i just mean that the metaverse is not a destination where all of a sudden you've arrived and you're like oh great i'm in the metaverse it really is going to be something that's going to be happening to consumers bit by bit they are taking a very unique perspective on this which is that the metaverse can mean many things but the key to it is immersion greater than what we had prior to that mm -hmm. and they're trying to figure out what are the innovative ways that they can get people more immersed with the world and a heightened sense of reality through ar so they're trying not just the story that daniel wrote for us for our marketing and advertising briefing but there are a lot of other things that they're trying in this space and just trying to see essentially what sticks what could be monetized long term so it's very interesting to see a few of the innovations that they're throwing out there Mm -hmm. Yeah, a few gateways into the metaverse, which is moving from the 2D version of the internet to a 3D version, virtual reality, mixed reality, augmented reality, and, and Snapchat very well positioned in augmented reality. They said that 250 million of their users engaged with AR features on a daily basis. That would be 75% of its daily user base. Story two, be real. Is Gen Z's new favorite social media app, writes Wynn Davis of NPR. What is it? What the hell is Be Real, you might be asking? Well, it's a new and unique way to discover who your friends really are in their daily lives. That's how they describe themselves. How does it work? Well, it's an app. Miss Davis of NPR explains that once a day, you get a notification saying it's time to post your Be Real for the day. You have two minutes to do so. Your friends get a notification at the same time. The idea is that you take a photo of whatever you're doing at that time, no matter how mundane or exciting, she notes. You take one photo of what you're doing with your back-facing camera, and at the same time, your phone takes a photo of you with your front-facing camera. Retakes are okay, and you can post if you run over the two minutes, but your friends will know that you have done so. Users can't see their friends' pics until they've uploaded their own, Jeremy, the likelihood of Be Real making some noise in the social media space is blank. The likelihood is about one in 10. <laughs> one in 10. Ah. One in 10. I'll tell you the reason why. It might be about 12 and a half percent. And okay. that's not to be down on them. But I was taking a look at all of the different major features or platforms or apps that have been released. And I think you know quite a number of them that they show up and then they leave. And every now and then, kind of like in the NBA, right? You draft the seven foot three guy and most of the time he can't play. But sometimes yeah. he's great. And that's why you draft him. Because how Paul else Zingas. can you find... Right. Sorry. Sorry, Chris Stapps. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So it is one of those things where I think that a lot of people see the potential and we start to write about it. I think it's interesting. There have been other platforms, even in the last year or two, that we talked about a lot more than we do now. Clubhouse is a perfect example. Triller is another example. Mm -hmm. So I think that there's a novelty aspect to it, and it does tap into something that Gen Z craves, which is authenticity. In addition, Gen Z also craves a heightened sense of reality. And to some extent, that's something that TikTok provide. So mm -hmm. I think that there is a chance, but at the end of the day, there is a finite number of hours that anybody can get into any of these apps. 
Yes, a great point. Who are they taking these hours away from? I mean, the growth's been great so far. The app launched in December of 2019, but most two thirds of its downloads were this year. So they had a million downloads in January, 1.5 million in February, 2 million in March. So they're in good shape. It's a good trajectory to be on. Downloads up over 300% according to Aptopia this year. Be Real was ranked fourth in downloads in the US, the UK and France in Q1 of this year after Instagram, Snapchat and Pinterest. But Jeremy, we saw similar type of growth with Clubhouse and that kind of petered out. So we'll see. That's all we've got time for for this episode. Jeremy, thank you so much for hanging out. Pleasure to be with you as always. And thank you to Todd, who's helping us edit the show. Thanks to everyone listening in. We'll see you tomorrow for the Behind the Numbers Daily, an e-marketer podcast made possible by M-Particle.